going to the VMTs today. How good was that? Amazing. I think that was actually one of my favourite bucket lists to go. We're Nick and Amy. In September 2018, we quit our jobs, sold everything we owned to go travelling around the world. We're taking What The Faux Travel podcast on the road to learn, challenge and explore the world. We've set up our own business, Ant Podcast Management, Amy, Nick, Thompson, get it, Ant, so that we can be location independent and travel full time. Our rough route starts in Europe and the Middle East, then moves on to Latin, Central and North America. On this episode, we explore the VLTs in Antofagasta. Tell me how you feel right now. So, things have been going wrong. Hey guys, we thought we'd update you on uh, what's been going on in our life. We've had quite a couple of days and we're very stressed. Yeah, so do you want to explain a little bit about what happened yesterday briefly? So yesterday, as you saw, we went to the El Yeso Dam, or the valley, which was amazing. On the drive home, we were pulled over by the police. Um, because someone was speeding. Although to be fair, it's not very clear how the speed limit is. There's like hardly any road signs. It was it? really difficult. Everyone was going like the same speed. Anyway, we got pulled over and we think it's like two miles per hour. Over. Yeah. We got pulled over, but actually in the end the cop was quite nice and he wasn't corrupt. He just said in future slow down. And Amy kind of played dumb to the fact that like she couldn't really speak Spanish. She was like, uh, no entiendo. And I think because we didn't speak Spanish, he just thought, I can't be bothered with this. And he just said like, uh, what's slow down in Spanish? Más lento. Más lento. Or But what's worse is what's happened today. So we have come to the airport today. Imagine this, right? You get to the airport on time. You go through security on time. You get to your gate on time. And you still miss your flight, but it's the fault of the airline. So they, we were told on the screens to go to gate 33. That's how airports normally work. Jet, uh, what's their name? Jet smart. Jet smart. Not very smart. Not very smart because you don't know how an airport works. On the screen, if you write the gate, that's the one that people walk to. Yeah. Yeah. So like we were sat there for ages. And it said the destination of where we're going. And it said delayed. Delayed. So we're waiting, 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 waiting for hours, and suddenly. It vanishes from the screen, and I can't see our flight in any of the other screens around the airport. So we speak to a member of staff. It turns out our flight left hours ago, and then they said, "Oh, we did do an announcement on the tannoy, but it was in Spanish, not our first language." And then one of the staff said, um, "Yeah, but the screens, you see, screens don't work, so that, that's why it didn't tell you to change gates. What airports do the screens not work?" Unbelievable. So we were waiting for hours not knowing that our flight's already gone. So we've had to buy a brand new flight because we're taking off a bucket list item to go to the VLTs, the very large telescopes in the desert. And we need to be there because it only happens once a week and we're booked to be on this one so we need to get there. And so it's just been really stressful and now we've just blown five days budget on this Bunch flight because flights. apparently the screens are broken and when I said that to the new airline, LATAM, who by the way were absolutely amazing, they worked really fast to get us on this flight which was leaving in like less than an hour and we're now at the gate waiting. I told them the screens aren't working apparently, LATAM said that's not true. They were like, they're not broken. That's that's a lie. So, jet smart. Bad. We're going to be getting some money back from you, and uh, you know, expect an angry email from me. Well, yeah, we're going to try and get some money back, but jet smart, bad, Latam so far. Brilliant. Good. <laughs> Telescope facility is operated by the European Southern Observatory and it's on Cerro Paranal in the Atacama Desert in northern Chile. Alright, so this is a big adventure. 
Once we got a hire car, which took a while to find. Anyway, yesterday we rushed around, we managed to find a place which we could sort out a deal with them with the car, because that's the only way we can get to the VLTs, the very large telescopes. And we were trying on Facebook to see if anyone else was going, maybe someone could give us a lift instead. We tried on couch surfing. It would have been cool to give someone a ride, because then we could have all split the cost. But anyway, here we are. But this is a proper adventure like we're driving into the desert to these massive telescopes the biggest in the world and this is not a place that people come to really but only like truckers who are doing long routes for America and we think we're on the Pan American Highway so like the main road across all of the Americas which is like really cool exciting it's a proper adventure how you feeling Amy? Yeah I feel really excited so this is something I've wanted to tick off on my bucket list for a really long time it's number 24 and uh, yeah it just says to go see the VLTs I never knew if it was possible to actually do it but here we are in the car on the way to go there and the tour is absolutely free so if you want to do this it's free you just need to register and I thought there'd be a really long list but I only registered the other day I only found out about it yeah. so yeah you can come here too if you want to so earlier when we were discussing about the car and how to get here we did consider hitchhiking uh, but we basically weren't brave enough to but um, someone who is brave enough is Tim in the back <laughs> Tim! Bonjour! <laughs> yeah we saw this guy and we thought you know we've been in his position many times and we would want to get picked up so we're doing our thing for the uh, hitchhiking community <laughs> First spot, our first sighting of the telescopes. There they are on top oh of the hill. Oh my god! Wow. Because we've arrived, everybody's in like big jackets, trousers, woolly hats, and shorts. At least you got shoes on. It is really windy up here, isn't it? You're about to experience one of the world's most remarkable places for astronomy, science, and technology. Now we're going into the, uh, what's it called, the, the residence. The residence. You might recognize it because it's from a very famous James Bond film. Quantum of Solace. is located at 2,400 meters above sea level. It's not a commercial hotel. It's only used by the scientists and engineers who work there. It has four levels, 108 rooms and 18 offices. It includes a restaurant, music room, library, swimming pool and sauna. <laughs> of them there one of them's on the other side so we can't see it but the four main ones have names from the Mapuche uh, Mapucha Mapuchu the tribe which is the indigenous people from Chile and um, so this one behind me right let me say around so this one is the sun in their language this one's called the moon this one is called the four stars like the cross of stars and this one So these telescopes are used to map the universe. Do you also use these to detect objects a bit closer, objects that might be crashing into Earth? 
Uh, usually, no. Actually, for example, you cannot observe the moon with this telescope because it would be too bright and you can find the infrared. So, for looking at near asteroids here, you use a small telescope, some meter diameter, something like that. Yeah, so these are really just for long distance, other galaxies. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So for that, it's going to map the entire sky every two days. So if you compare the images, you can find anything that's moving. And you can use that to find new asteroids. The camera that is there, mm -hmm. that's called NACO, is the one that takes the first picture mm -hmm. of a planet orbiting another star. This could be, this or another one, could be the first telescope to see a planet with other life. Possibly. Possibly, yeah. yeah. Also part of the roof. As you can see, there is a gap on the roof, on the air, on the ceiling. Then it's all we all the way are spinning. We're that. moving right now. Okay. No, <laughs> the enclosure is moving. <laughs> wait, wait, the what's, what's Just moving? Enclosure. The enclosure, this part here is moving. Okay, so the, out, the outside is we are, moving. We are, we are not moving. <laughs> exactly, we are not moving. It's, it's just enclosure. <laughs> <laughs> so we are not moving, the enclosure is moving. It's very, very misleading. <laughs> seems like I feel like I'm moving. That's so really now weird. We can go upstairs. <laughs> Can't, too dizzy. It took eight years to make another mirror. They did it in Germany, then they sent to France to be college, then by ship to Antofagasta port, and then by truck to here. It took five days from the Antofagasta port to here, because the truck was going like five kilometers per hour. If the mirror breaks, there are no replacements, so they have to take very good care of them. So we just learned that these clamps around the mirror and when there's an earthquake, if it's over seven, it will um, stabilize the mirror so there's a break. No, we are not moving. It's just enclosure. Yeah, exactly. I think it's because of the, the rumbling it feels. Yeah. Uh -huh. Why is this here? Like, obviously, we're in a desert and it's the best place to stargaze, but why this desert rather than in the desert in Sahara, for example? Well, there's a lot of factors. Mm -hmm. Features, for example, altitude, humidity, and the days that has a good weather during the year. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't mention it, but it's just like the average is 50 nights, just 50 nights that could be cloudy or strong wind or high humidity, etc. 15, 15, Yeah, one five. Yeah. So the other 350 nights is completely clear. This is why it's a good place. <laughs> the only downside of this free tour of the VLTs is that it's a daytime tour. Therefore, you can't see the telescopes working by night. Did you know the very large telescope was the first to find a planet orbiting a sun outside of our solar system? Astronomers also found a system of seven Earth-sized planets just 40 light years away. Using ground and space telescopes, including ESO's Very Large Telescope, the planets were all detected as they passed in front of their parent star. Three of the planets lie in the Goldilocks zone, not too hot, not too cold which means these planets could harbour oceans of water on their surfaces, increasing the possibility that the star system could be home to alien life. in the entire world. And by that I mean that there's about two or three scientific papers published every single day from these telescopes. So each station here in the control room is for an individual telescope. So one here, one there, and right over the other side of the room is where the control centre is going to be for the new telescope that they're building about 30 kilometres away, which has an even better name than these telescopes. As you know, these are the very large telescopes. The new one is called the European Extremely Large Telescope, and that will be the biggest single telescope in the world. Completely free.
free. It's been absolutely amazing. Um, we've really enjoyed it. We've learned so much. And um, you'll hear an uh, interview with the astronomers on the podcast. So we're on the way back now to Antofagasta. And how good was that? Amazing. I, I think that was actually one of my favourite bucket lists to tick off. Yeah, definitely. it was. It was so good, it was interesting, it was unique, like it was, it was geeky. <laughs> very geeky, it was such a different thing to do. Uh, yeah, really special. And like Amy said earlier, the tour is free. You just need to get yourself there. So that was really special. Uh, what did you think of the tour? It was great, fantastic, <laughs> really. Like, uh, so impressive, like the whole thing. Yeah, yeah it, it's one of a kind. It was fantastic. <laughs> and did we save you today? Yeah, and you're, you're even bringing me back uh, home or to the bus terminal, so... Okay, well, we've also hitchhiked, so we, we, know, uh, we know how you feel. But he also saved us because we didn't have the correct clothing because it was so cold. And he gave us some jackets, so... God, yeah, there's us thinking the desert's going to be hot because we're quite high, it was very windy. It was cold, so yeah, we borrowed some clothes, so thank you very much for your clothes. <laughs> come off road for a little walk in the desert. Park the car, walking up a hill. It is an amazing landscape. I mean, everything's dead. There's not really anything to see apart from dust and mountains, but it is like strangely beautiful. So while we got a car, we thought we might as well check out the desert. on what the fuck this small world we bumped into someone it's our couch surfing host from Recife in Brazil yeah we go. we've got a car so we've got, we've got a crew we've yeah we've got a car and a crew our plans work perfectly we've this is with a couple of weeks in the making <laughs> come back to the car and we've got a flat tire so I mean, is there a better way uh, to have a flat tyre than in the desert? I feel like it's the best place, right? Everybody of what are you doing, Leo? No, it's very important. I'm a potassium and you can recover.